Hello everybody! My name is Bennett Perez and I'm from Fleur's Cakes. I am a Dubai-based cake artist and cake decorating teacher. So I have developed my own techniques to produce isomalt flower art. If you can see, I will be demoing today how to craft these beautiful star or lilies. So in this demo, you will understand the importance of planning ahead and the flower construction to produce lifelike isomalt flowers. Instead of presenting these lilies on a wire, I'm going to show you how to attach these lilies on an actual cake. Before starting anything, you have to understand the structure of your flower. I have downloaded this image from the internet and I would strongly suggest for you to look for images as references if you do not have access to the real flower. So in this image, you will see the parts of a lily. We will only do the visible part and leave out some part which are not visible on the actual. So what I meant by that, the ovary and the ovule is already part of the inner lily so we we don't need to do that one because it's not really visible when we see the actual flower unless of course if you dissect it which we will not do all right so there are hybrids already of lilies and on the hybrids we do not uh, see the petals as well as the receptacle so we can leave this out and then for the peduncle uh, it will be represented by the wire which i will be showing you as we are uh, going along the project so I, if you see, I have marked already what are the things that we're going to do. So this is how you plan your project so that you don't have to waste so much time going back and forth for missing out some parts, okay? So for the stigma, we're going to do one time and then this style is also one time. So the stamens, okay, it's over here. It's composed of anther and filament. So we need uh, about five stamens. So obviously we need five anther and then five filament. Now the petals, which, uh, which is shown over here, we will be needing six of them. So I have written it down so that it is more uh, clear and we are guided by the notes that we have made let me quickly go through the materials that we need for this project all right so i have the material list here you just have to uh capture okay do a screenshot so that at least you'll have the list uh, with you whenever you want to use it. okay so we have the gloves we need two types of gloves we have the cotton gloves and then the nitrile okay we need this one in order to protect ourselves from excessive heat we need to put the uh cotton gloves first and then the nitrile on top we also need sugar lamp the sugar lamp is our source of heat so it's about 250 watts that we need the bulb so you can have a trip to your local uh, hardware shop and then ask them for about 250 watts uh, wattage of bulb and a lamp that could hold the, the same wattage okay and then we have the silicone mat, which is this one. Okay, and silicone pan. Silicone pan, you will see it in a while because I'll be using it to melt our uh, isomalt under the lamp. Then I have my isomalt tools. Okay, let me just uh, show you what are my isomalt tools. Okay, these are actually uh, pottery tools. Okay, but I really love to use them because they are very, very handy. And then they work best for isomalt. And then pair of scissors, obviously you know what scissor is. And then a uh, blowtorch, okay? So we have the blowtorch. And then we need also airbrush. So these materials you will be seeing later as I go through the project because I will be using them. And then uh, you will get familiarized if you don't have this uh, with you at the moment. So painting brushes, we need uh, sizes like for dusting and then for detailing. All right. We also need 18 uh, gauge wire. This will be shown later. Okay, and then uh, we need the florist tape, preferably green, and then veiner. All right. So for the edibles, we need isomalt nibs, the white colored. If you don't what, uh, if you don't have the nibs, you can watch my tutorial in YouTube. Just search for florist cakes. Okay, and there you will see how I cook my isomalt granules 
to make it usable and uh, you can also make your own lips out of the pre-tempered or pre-cooked isomalt okay so uh, we also need this airbrush colors color rose and spring green we need powder colors as well cerise chartreuse tangerine and light yellow um i'm just taking the colors based on what i have this is not product dependent so whatever you have as long as they have the same shade and it replicates the color of the actual flower that you're trying to copy that would really work now to um, make your edible paint out of the powder color we need beaker spirit or the vodka uh, another one i'll just include here we need uh, pme glaze spray okay so pme glaze spray you will understand that later how is this used okay so you have to position now your nibs under the heat lamp so that it will start to melt out a little bit you really don't need to microwave it because you don't want your nibs to be in liquid form so we're just trying to heat it to make it on bendable uh, form or just to soften it a little bit okay so we are going to use this katie sue mold uh which is the flower pro range of nicholas lodge right so if you can observe this mold it comes in two types all right so this is pretty much what we need for this project it has two sizes small and large for the petal and both the leaf as well small and large for the stigma and there's two types of uh, stamen here like the anther of the stamen there's two types so you can choose what we're going to use for this project is the small ones okay so we also have here this second part of this mold which is another veiner which we can use to vein the back i have here now my isomalt which was uh, sitting under the lamp so if you can see now this is very pliable okay. i'm going to get small amount of isomalt from the from the one that we have a bit preparing under the lamp okay so this is the one what i'll do is that i'll try to cut um little amounts to fill in these cavities of uh the cavities over here all right so i'll just snip a little bit and then i'll try to fill the cavity with uh this little portion all right so i'm just trying to make sure that they have like the exact exact quantity all right can you see that okay so i need one from that and then I need five from this bit here. Okay, so same way, I'm going to um, snip, snip a portion. Okay, this is way uh, too, too much. So I'm just cutting a little bit. Okay, so if you feel that it already has uh, dried up or it has hardened a bit prior to um, taking the form you can just um put your torch torch it a little bit and then once again pop it into your mold okay so make sure that it takes in the the shape all right so there you go so you have that shape you don't have to worry about those um little excess over here because you can just snip it off later there you go so you need six of that all right and now i'm just pulling i'm just pulling and pulling to make the the style okay so this is the style okay the style is this one right okay 
that connects the stigma okay so I'm just pulling it a little bit like that I'll just try to snip it because it's too uh, big for me okay so there you go I'm just uh, curving it a little bit so that it gets uh, some some movement some drama all right now the filament which will hold the hunter is a little bit uh, thinner than this one so you just have to again pull 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 okay and then snip it there and pull a little bit more all right and cut right so this is the one all right so it's thinner now i want to cut the excess of this one since it has dried up already i'll just snip i'll just snip it with uh the the tip of my scissors it's like cleaning cleaning the edges okay so like so there you go okay to attach this you just have to uh, fire the tip and then attach it like that just wait for a little bit okay just wait for a little bit until it's fully secured so i'll just fire a little bit there like so and then okay i'll just create some movement maybe like that and here on the bottom i just want to fire it a little bit and create also a movement so that's how easy it is okay so to create movement so that when i attach them together there is a certain movement to it okay so let me fire the tip and attach okay i'm just attaching it like so all right so you really don't have to worry now about the color because later we will um, do the coloring all at once so i will be making more anthers to make five i have pre-made about uh, several of them actually uh, so that we will be uh, using uh, more flowers for our decoration so here i'm just showing you uh, and repeating the procedure so that at least you'll be guided I also have pre-made the filament uh, a while ago before I have started the video that's why we already have uh, them ready so that we won't waste time uh, doing a repetitive uh, thing so after which we can just um, set this aside and then we can start uh, with the next step which is the making of the petals all right now I'm coming back to the same mold that we have used previously Again, I'm taking uh, some isomalt from this uh, heated isomalt under the lamp, okay? So I'm just pulling, pulling some, okay? And then I'm just going to cut it, okay, over there. If you can hear the scratching in my door, that's our um, cats. They wanted to uh, come inside my workstation as well. And maybe want to watch. Alright, so there you go. So I'm just going to um, fill, make sure that it's uh, totally filled. Okay, I can just put my lamp for some time. Put this one underneath and then again once again press 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 and there you go and put it back 
and here you go can you see those nice nice veins over there okay so just pick it up and then cut the edges okay all right there you go so i'm just going to create like the movements that i want there you go and that's basically it so again i'm just distributing the heat i'm taking one more there you go so this is quite fat so what i'm i just have um taken off a bit from that let me put it under my lamp okay And then press, press, press. Take your tool, smoothen it out. Press, press, press. Okay. All right. So it's there. Let me put my back veiner. go and I'll just cut this off I'll cut this under the lamp so I can see better there you go there you have it okay and then put it on out of the lamp just create the shape and voila okay so now we have our six petals Okay, I'll show you how to do a leaf so that at least you can uh, use it as an uh, as a spray arrangement as well okay so I'm not changing any color I'm still sticking to the white okay but now instead of using it's actually the same procedure but instead of using the petal uh, petal veiner we're going to shift to the leaf veiner okay so again i'm picking up okay like so and then put it there all right and pull it up a bit like so all right and same thing we can use this uh, back back veiner to vein And there you go and then I'll just um, put it under the lamp okay and make some movement as necessary okay like so okay so let me just change my gloves okay let me just finish all this statement so that at least we can proceed with the assembly and the coloring so so it's it's really easy it's a process which is uh, repetitive so as you do it several times you get more and more better at it okay there you go like so
Okay. And the last one. I'm sorry, I was out of camera range. Okay. There you have it. Okay, so I'll try to set this aside so that we'll have some room for airbrushing, okay? So just if you want to be sure, it's all the same as the other one. Let's just go and take a bath and add a lighter shade of okay, so for airbrushing. Okay, so I'm just trying to let down everything a little bit because for me it's really like a bit dark. I have my petal dust. You just have to be very, very careful because this is very fresh right now. Since we are just making a very, very thin... Okay, so let me just get our reference. So... If you see here, in our um, reference, okay, so if you can see here, the style, okay, and the stigma, okay, over there, the style and the stigma, it's uh, all throughout colored, uh, like, light green, okay, light green, apple green, spring green, it doesn't matter, okay, and then uh, part of the stamen, okay, I would say that the anther is colored orange and then this part of the stamen like halfway halfway of the stamen is called also colored um, spring green so we'll try to do this one okay and execute right so I'm just filling up my uh, airbrush tank with uh, spring green Okay, so two. Okay, so I just have uh, put two drops. Okay, and I'm uh, turning on my airbrush into the lowest mode. Okay, right. So I'm just going to start off to airbrush here. Okay, so there you go. Brush that side and yeah. Okay. I'm doing it on the lowest setting so that the overspray will not be too much, okay? So there you go. If you if you feel that it's too green for you, you can add up a little bit of yellow. Or you can uh you can dust it also to lighten up. I'm not supposed to color that part, but it, that's fine, okay? Actually, it's just here. Like halfway. So this three, same way. Okay. Like so. Then I'm going to uh, take my magic color. This is like at uh, I'm not sure it's a light color yellow. I'm just going to lighten the color a little bit, okay? So I'll just brush it directly into that part which I have airbrushed. So. 
let me get now the leaf that uh, I've done so I'm just doing a light shading of the leaf so sides as well as the back okay that and then another one so when you're airbrushing can you see that it really picks up the nice texture okay so the back as well Okay. so now I'm just um, going to wash this one with a little bit of alcohol okay and I'm going to segregate this or set it aside so that uh, when I spray the petals it won't uh, pick up the oversprays right so this one here I'll just put it here okay so now I'm going to uh, pick up the petals okay I'm going to use um, liquid color rose gold by rainbow dust Okay, so I'm just putting one, two, two drops. Okay, you see that? All right, let me just try to explain a little bit. Okay, so if you can see here, we are just uh, there is this uh, rose color at the middle leaving the sides white so we'll leave it plain white okay so there is a darker uh, color concentration at the bottom so we have to execute that one as well right so i'm going to put on my airbrush once again on the medium one and now what we're going to do is that try to hit only the center that's so like so there you go right okay and then just go a bit um, farther from the subject and then do a light brush right So you have to repeat that for all uh, six petals. Brush. And then go. You have to go closer when you want to have a prominent, a more prominent and fine line. Okay? Like so. Again, from the outside, farther. Okay, and then central ridge okay. I'm no longer airbrushing the the back part because it makes it like uh, like the, the, the translucent effect so what the color uh, So again, outer part, and then one fine line. Okay. There you go. 
one more. Okay, so I'm just uh, taking off my gloves now um, because it's the color is already um, smudging. So let me just take it out and I'd be working on with my uh, bare hand. Okay, so I'm going to um, clean up my workstation. And remove my so now these are our petals okay and our stamens and our pistil uh, the stigma and the style right now um if you can uh, notice that in the lady right there are dots like these dots over here okay so we're going to paint that one as well as the orange top okay so i'm going to start off with the orange i have here um sugarine sugarine petal dust tangerine okay and then I'm just mixing it with a little bit of vodka. Okay, so in the Middle East, we don't have, uh, we're not allowed to uh, use alcohol. Uh, there are some baker spirits which you can uh, get and also, uh, you can also use um, clear, clear soda. 7-Up or 7-Up um, or Sprite. Okay, so I'm just taking some... Um, some of the sugar in tangerine mixing it with some alcohol also if you have semolina you can also uh, do colored semolina and then just uh, dip this one it would work as well otherwise tangerine orange so they will um, look good as well so i'm just um So I'm just um, trying to paint the top, okay, like so, right, and then we'll let it dry. So we have to repeat this process for the five um, five stamens. Okay, this is the third. If you have questions, guys, just uh, post the questions. Just comment, and I'll try to answer it. Okay. If I don't answer it right away, just uh, I'll make sure that I'll come back to you. So you just have to read through the comments uh, once again. Okay. You have to be very, um, sorry, I was out of range. You have to be very observant also with the actual flower. So that at least when you're trying to replicate them uh, by isomalt, uh, you, when you do the planning, you can exactly tell what will be the processes that you're going to make in order to um, give the lifelike, lifelike uh, feature. Now I'm going to shift with another color. Now I'm going to use um, Ceres. Okay. I have very uh, less series now, so I'm just going to um, I'm just going to sorry I'm other I'm I'm just going to put a little bit of alcohol in the container. Okay, so this is the one that we're going to use to um, to draw the spots. Okay, so let me just wash this one. You can either use series or burgundy, so they did all work just fine okay so if you can see here like on the actual mold 
we'll see that there are already um like the the spots okay those spots are where you're going to uh to paint with uh, the series okay so you just have to follow that one that's why the flower uh, pro mold is very convenient when you're doing your um your lilies because it already has all the dimensions that you need okay so you just have to oops sorry I hit my camera so you just have to make those um, spots Okay, so this is very random guys you don't need to be very precise on how many dots that you're going to uh, put in this um in each petal okay so nobody would count it as long as the dots are prominent enough that will be fine okay because some of the dots would have uh like the the dents won't be very visible anymore okay so you can just randomly create the dots okay so as you go upwards the petal okay the the smaller the dots the dot gets okay okay so we have uh, finished painting our petals i'm going to um come back and paint a little bit more on the on the leaves okay because this is too light if you see the actual leaves of this one it is a little bit darker as compared to what we have done okay so i'm going to just uh put this aside all right okay so I'm uh, going back, let me just take this back again, okay, just to have, okay. Alright, so I have here a sugarine um, edible petal dust, the chartreuse, okay. I'm just going to um, put a little bit. This is just to enhance and give some shading on our leaf, okay. So, if you can see, there's a really, really deep grooves over there. It will really pick up the color. Okay. So, when you're dusting your um, isomalt, it helps in sealing in okay, the pieces. Alright, so it doesn't really get affected much by humidity. So this is a really good way to seal it as well. Okay, so can you see that there's already the gradient of color? It picks up the color nicely. Okay, so I'll just leave the back as it is. Alright? Okay, so I'm going to do for this tree more. Okay, it's really, it's really, really not um, hard to do this thing. Okay, it takes practice. But when you get the hang of it, it's, it's going to be easy. Alright, so you see that there's already like nice, nice shadings. Also, another thing, um, you have to uh, make sure that you invest on brushes as well because uh, when you're doing a lot of dusting work, it's really um, nice.
to get the the effect of good brushes because it it will really blend in the color okay so like so so there you go so i find it very pretty now okay so now we're going to assemble uh one by one i'm going to show you how it's done how to wire it okay we don't need to wire it like petal by petal just like the sugar flowers that's why i'm i'm always emphasizing that you have to plan ahead so i have here 18 gauge wire okay so uh when you're going to just wire your um flower what you need to do is make this thicker so it's either you uh use and uh join two or at least three to four wires together and then tape it okay otherwise um just for the purpose of showing you today what i'm going to do is just use one wire so i have pre-covered already the wire okay so when you cover your wire with your tape normally i take my wire and my tape you have to activate the glue by pulling it so this is a full tape because i need the volume okay so i'm just attaching it okay okay you have to clip it there okay and then just try to rotate make sure that it is tight you're wiring it tightly okay so there you go right okay so i have here some isomal pieces what we're going to do with this is that we're going to melt some part let me just okay i'll take this through torch okay so i'm just melting some parts of this isomal right and then I'm going to um, put my my wire okay in this place just like so and then just wait it for for it to dry okay it doesn't really matter that uh, it dries like very very neat as long as they hold together that's gonna be fine so i'm just trying to pick it up now all right so there you go okay so um i'm just going to use my my tool okay to push the isomal at the top okay so this part it's not very uh, hot anymore i'm just going to use now I'm not gonna use my uh, gloves but this is like bearable already on this stage okay so like so i'm going to torch it again to just uh, clean it up a little bit make it smooth all right so i want this hood okay so i want that hood because we will stick our isomalt pieces on this hood alone all right so we'll start with i will be starting with our center okay so i'll start with this one and then i'll follow with this uh, with my torch i'm going to torch this and then the 
base of my style and attach all right it's clear okay so we're just waiting for it to dry okay so it's fully dry now right so next i'm going to uh, put our stamens again you have to fire at the mat okay and then attach Let it dry. Okay, you can also use your tool to push and attach. Okay, so I'm going to proceed again to do the other four. Okay, so here I'm just doing the base and then here attach. Oopsie. Right, so if that happens, it breaks, don't worry. It's sugar. You can just attach it so it's magic. Alright. So again, the tip. And then attach. Okay. Oops. Didn't attach much. Okay. Then the tip. And then attach. right Let me just put this aside and then put my petals here. Okay, so for the petals, you just have to fire the, the bottom. Fire it good. And attach. Okay, so just hold for some time until it's fully, fully attached. Okay, one, so I'm just putting it down now, one, and then I'll put two, okay, so if you see I'm pressing, Make sure that when you press, guys, over here, it's not on a liquid liquid form. Otherwise, you'll burn yourself. It's always safe to uh, just put on the gloves, okay? To avoid any hazard. Okay. And then, I'll put it here. So, I'm not touching it yet. If you can see, I'm not touching it yet. I'm waiting for some time. And then when uh, it's a little bit cooler, that's when I'm, I'm pushing it downwards. Okay, like so. Right. So now I'm going to put the three more in between each petal. Okay. 
okay so i'm attaching don't touch it first okay after some time that's when you push downwards okay there you go over here wait for some time and push it downwards okay and we have our last petal so let's see okay so we're going to put the last petal over here Last petal over here. Okay, so attach. If you have your tool, you can also use your tool to push. Okay. Rather than touching it, it's safer. Okay. So now you have your first, first stargazer. Okay, so here's your stargazer now. All right. I'm going to um, show you. Let me just uh, fix this one. Keep it away. All right. So you have your first stargazer over here. I won't finish um, the wiring for all uh, all of them because the principle is the same. So what I want to show you um, after this is that how you're going to put it directly on a cake, right? So um, I have prepared a dummy cake so that at least you'll see how to assemble an isomalt flower on the cake directly, all right? okay so i have prepared now a cake this is just a very simple cake with uh, the snail trail piped on it and i'm going to teach you how are we going to attach the flowers onto a real cake okay so i have here uh like a nice amount melted okay i just have microwaved it a little bit but not too much okay so i'm just going to create a stick out of this isomalt So this is not very hot, that's why I'm not wearing any gloves anymore. Alright, so the, the heat of the isomalt is very tolerable. What I'll do is I'll just try to um, try to position where I want to put my flowers, okay? So uh, the first flower, I'll position it here, and then one here, or maybe two here, and then three over here on top. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll just fire. A good amount of isomal okay and then I'll attach it to my flower over here all right like so and I'm going to um, cut this part over here all right let me just move this one a little bit over there like so Right, so I'm just cutting that part. So it gives us an extra isomalt over here to mount. All right. So that part, I'm going to um, torch once again. And it will melt that bit of isomalt. And then I can just push it here. Right, can you see that? As easy as that. 
So now, your isomalt is already attached onto your cake directly. Um, let me just put one more here. Okay, so again, same procedure. Melt a bit of isomalt from the stick that you have made. Okay, and then attach it onto your isomalt flower. You have to be very careful on the drips, okay? Because that's really hot. So you make sure that you are working on the on top of your mat. All right. So like so it's over there. And again, I'm going to um fire that bit there and attach it here. Okay? Again. Down there and cut. So down there and then cut. There you go. Hold it on the one petal and position it here. So just hold it for some time as I have mentioned. So let me just put it back again. So this, that's the beauty of this um, this medium is that when you break it, you can just again reattach it. Okay, wait for some time, and it's there. Okay, right. So I'm going to um, fire this bit here. And then attach it here. Oops. Okay, let me just attach it first. Okay. Wait for some time. And I'm going to reattach this one. This was the broken one. And there you go. So let me just hold it until it's fully settled. Additional isomalt. Okay. And okay so it's really looking very pretty now but then we have to attach some more of the leaves so that it's going to be um, giving you a balance in the color and in the contrast as well so I'm just using some leaves here let me just put some one here So I have made several leaves also. So let me put it here. Okay. And one more over here. Alright, so straight away I'm just firing the tip. And then attach. So I'm just trying to figure out if it looks perfect okay so again so you just have to wait just wait for some time until it's it fully adheres I think I need to fire this one a bit more a little bit more I just fired a little bit more over there okay so just attaching there so I'm attaching attaching it to the base okay you remember we have the base the white stick that I have uh, I have um, added into the base of the flower. So same way, I'm attaching the, the leaves, the, the base of the leaves, onto that white base. So now here's our finished project, our Isomalt Star Gazer Lily. It is already well assembled in the cake. So I have um, demonstrated how to do it in wire. Okay, and 
how to attach it on a cake, alright? Uh, before I end the demo, I would like to teach you how to protect your isomalt pieces from attracting the humidity and moisture in the air. So, we're going to use this PME clay spray. You just have to lightly spray it, your pieces, okay? All over. Just like so. Okay, and that one as well, over here. Okay, so which I have already done. Okay, once you do that, it creates a, it's like a sealant, okay? It seals in your petals and your leaves from attracting moisture from the air and it allows it to be um, like on the same state for a very, very long time. Guys, you're going to try this one because it's really fun, fun to do uh, things like this in isomal. It's very easy as long as you plan ahead, okay? And make sure you uh, work safely and uh, the complete materials proper materials and when you do please don't forget to tag me in your um in your project so that at least i'll see the outcome of this uh demonstration okay so thank you very much for joining me and i hope to see you again sometime very soon bye